Today, we are going to be reading one of my favorite dinosaur books, Stomp, Dinosaur Stomp by Margaret Mayo, illustrated by Alex Aleph. I love this book because it brings to life dinosaurs who are extinct ancient animals. They are not animals that we can see in our world anymore. They lived millions of years ago, about 250 million years ago to about 65 million years ago. Can you imagine how long ago that was? But this book uses imagination and art to bring them back to life for us. It shows us how they may have moved, what they may have liked to do, and what they may have looked like. Now, how do we know these things? Imagination definitely plays a part, but we know these things generally because of fossils. We don't have pictures or videos of dinosaurs millions of years ago. I wish we did. How cool would that be? We can't jump in a time machine and go back millions of years to use our own eyes to observe them, like many scientists do when they observe and learn about animals living today. But we do have fossils. And fossils are any sign of ancient life. It could be bones. It could be footprints. It could be pieces of ancient plants that have petrified. It could be poop. It could be absolutely any sign of ancient life that tells us what those animals and plants were like and what Earth was like many, many years ago. The type of scientists that study these fossils are called paleontologists. And they take these fossils, these clues, they study them and use all the information that they find and their imaginations to tell the stories of these ancient animals and ancient Earth. So all of that information, the work of all of those people have brought us to a place today where we can have incredible stories like Stomp Dinosaur Stomp. Now I'm going to read our story, but my friends, I want to tell you that this book is full of motions and sounds. And if you have room, you could stand up or seated, prepare your arms and stretch them out and get ready because I encourage you to move along with our dinosaur characters today. I will say that some of our dinosaurs played rough, so please do pretend and make sure that we do not touch anyone else or any other thing around and we play gently and safely, but we can use our imaginations to play along with our dinosaur characters today. Are we ready? All right, here we go. Look at the inside of our book has many of the characters we're going to meet today. Stomp, Dinosaur Stomp by Margaret Mayo, illustrated by Alex Aleph. What do we see here, my friends? Are those footprints? I see some footprints behind me. I think a dinosaur may have been stomping by. Mighty Tyrannosaurus loved stomp, stomp, stomping. Gigantic legs striding, enormous jaws opening, jagged teeth waiting for guzzle guzzling. So stomp, Tyrannosaurus, stomp. Look at those sharp teeth. It says Tyrannosaurus liked guzzle guzzling. That means eating very fast. I wonder what Tyrannosaurus liked to eat. Do you know? I see some sharp teeth. Immense Diplodocus loved swish, swish, swishing, long tail flicking, and fast whip whipping, enemy surprising, and smack scaring. So swish, Diplodocus, swish. Do we see this long tail? A long tail like that may have been great for surprise smacking enemies away and keeping itself safe. Crested Pteranodon loved glide, glide, gliding, spreading wide wings, circling, rising, higher and higher, swooping and soaring. So glide, Pteranodon, glide. These amazing animals 
were not technically dinosaurs, but they lived at the same time as dinosaurs. Look at their incredible wings. What is Pteranodon eating? It looks like a tasty fish. Mm, I like fish too. Fierce Velociraptor loved hunt, hunt, hunting. In fearsome packs, running, racing, hooked claws ready for quick pouncing. So hunt, Velociraptor, hunt. I know a few of us had this as our favorite dinosaur. Look at them hunting in a pack. Sometimes being smaller in size means working together will bring you a lot more dinner. Where are we now? It's very blue. I think it's the ocean. <gasps> Sleek Plesiosaurus loved zoom, zoom, zooming. Sturdy paddles swooshing, flapping, neck lunging, teeth showing, snatch, fish trapping. So zoom, Plesiosaurus, zoom. These amazing creatures are also not technically dinosaurs, but they lived at the same time as dinosaurs in the ocean. Look at them. That long neck would have been great for slashing through the water and grabbing a fish before it even knew what was coming. Tough Ankylosaurus loved whack, whack, whacking, tail club swinging, Battles winning while hiding safely under spikes and armor plating. So whack, Ankylosaurus, whack. Look at this dinosaur. So much armor. All of these spikes, this big club tail. It must have been very good at defending itself. Massive Brachiosaurus loved gulp, gulp, gulping, leaves picking, mouth stuffing, no chewing, fast eating, hungry, hungry giant, more food needing. So gulp, Brachiosaurus, gulp. This animal is so big. It was as big as a house, maybe even bigger. Imagine how much food we have to eat during a day to keep our bodies running. And then imagine how much food a huge animal like this would need to eat every day to keep its body running. That's a lot of plants. Wrinkly Triceratops loved charge, charge, charging. Thumpity thump, huge feet pounding, horns jutting, and wham, head butting. So charge, Triceratops, charge. These incredible dinosaurs had three horns. One, two, three. And very bony, very sturdy skulls. We still find their skulls today and they are massive. Sometimes they weigh up to a thousand pounds. Just the skull. Isn't that incredible? They definitely were designed to use those skulls if they needed to. Stiff-tailed Iguanodon loved chomp, chomp, chomping. Tough plants grabbing, cutting and biting. Chewing, mashing, and noisy grinding. So chomp, Iguanodon, chomp. We can tell a lot about what dinosaurs may have eaten by the shape of their teeth. When we see sharp teeth, that usually means that they were meat eaters, but even plant eaters have many different types of teeth and they tell us a little bit about what they were eating. The flatter they are, the more likely they were grinding grasses and soft things. But there are some dinosaurs that had sharper teeth that were likely used for clipping and chewing tougher stuff like sticks and twigs. It's amazing. Feathered Oviraptor loved guard, guard, guarding. Soft sand shaping, snug nest making. Eggs protecting until crick, crack. Babies hatching, so guard, Oviraptor, guard. 
these amazing dinosaurs are named for a very important fossil that was found. A mother oviraptor was found protecting a clutch of fossil eggs. Ovi means egg in Latin. So they were named for this behavior that mother oviraptors would do, protecting their babies. Amazing. <gasps> it's my favorite, you guys. Fantastic Stegosaurus loved stroll, stroll, strolling, tiny eyes glaring, spiky tail waving, showing off big curvy plates and looking quite amazing. So stroll, Stegosaurus, stroll. <laughs> this dinosaur is an interesting one. Look at all of those plates on its back. Do you have any ideas what those plates may have been used for? Hmm. There are lots of ideas out there. And the truth is that different scientists think different things. We don't 100% know what those big plates were used for. We need scientists in the future, you all watching out there today, to continue the search and find the fossils that will tell us for sure what they were for. Look at all of our friends together. Ah, I see Jennifer thinks maybe those plates are for protection. You might be right about that. Imagine the creatures in a grand parade with no fighting allowed and no one afraid. Some plotting, some swooping, while others just romp and Tyrannosaurus leading. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Look at all of them together. This is just a small fraction of the dinosaurs that we know about today. Scientists have helped us to find and name over 600 different dinosaurs. And all of those dinosaurs are incredible creatures that we know about thanks to fossils. But also that number is increasing all the time. And any of you watching today could become one of those scientists to help us learn even more and maybe discover a brand new dinosaur someday. My friends, we had a fun time together imagining these dinosaurs moving and living in an ancient earth. And imagination is so important, even for scientists. They have to use creative thinking to solve the problems that they set out to solve, to answer the questions that have no answers. So I encourage all of you to continue to use your imaginations. And today we could continue to use that imagination surrounding the theme of dinosaurs. You can continue to play and pretend to be a dinosaur just like we did together today. You could maybe write a story about the dinosaurs just like Stomp the Dinosaur Stomp. We also love to create art surrounding dinosaurs. And coming up next at 11 a.m. is a live meet and greet with a dinosaur puppet and that is being brought to life by our performing arts team. And a puppet like that is similar to our book. It's created based on facts from fossils, but it's using imagination to bring it back to life. I have created a little puppet of my own using some things that I had at home. This is my sauropod. I haven't decided what species it is yet, but I used a paper plate and folded it in half and stapled it and painted it with some colors that I like. I cut out some legs. I cut out a long neck and a head and a long tail. And I can now use my imagination to bring my sauropod to life maybe walking through the world, maybe enjoying a tasty stack. Delicious. I hope that you find inspiration today to think about dinosaurs in whatever way that you like. And our next uh, program, our performing arts with our meet and greet with our sauropodomorph puppet should hopefully uh, bring you some inspiration as well. 
I hope that you tune back in with us next week. We are going to be back at our normal time at 11 a.m. next week, and we will be reading a wonderful story in both English and Spanish next week. And I hope you can join us. Whatever you do with the rest of your day, please have a fantastic day. And if you'd like more information about our DinoFest programming today, you can find that at nhm.org slash DinoFest. Thank you for joining me and have a fantastic day, everybody. Rawr!